stylish, dramatic, and full of anime flair, Capcom's Street Fighter Alpha series took what worked in Street Fighter 2 and made it flashier than ever before. But this subseries was much more than a cosmetic reimagining. It introduced new gameplay concepts, new storyline lore, and, of course, loads of new and returning characters. Even though Street Fighter 2 was still being played all over the world, many new players had awaited years for a true sequel. When Street Fighter Alpha arrived in 1995, it was rebuilt from the ground up with new visuals, sounds, and characters, but also felt just similar enough for longtime Street Fighter 2 fans to hop in and start playing. The colorful anime art style also spoke to new players, just as anime shops and official VHS tapes were starting to appear in more and more Western malls. The anime influence is felt even in one of the game's backgrounds, where you can see an homage to the 1994 animated movie poster proudly displayed on a convenience store's windows. But perhaps most interesting is the game's general story, which actually takes place between Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2. We get to see young Ryu and Ken again, each looking much more stylish than their 1987 counterparts. And Chun-Li makes her first chronological appearance in the series with a new look and a few new moves. Villains M. Bison and Sagat also return with stockier, bulkier bodies than seen in Street Fighter 2. This fresh take made even returning characters feel new. Since Alpha had ties to the original Street Fighter, it made sense to dip in the Street Fighter 1 roster and bring them into the then-modern era. That meant playable versions of Adon and Birdie, who were previously just AI-controlled opponents. And while we're looking to the past, characters from Capcom's Final Fight series debuted in Street Fighter Alpha as well. Guy, one of Final Fight's three protagonists, and Sodom, the second level boss. Their appearance in Street Fighter Alpha formally linked the Final Fight and Street Fighter universes together. Fun fact, Final Fight, for a time, was known as Street Fighter 89, so there was always a little bit of cross-pollination going on. Guile wasn't present, but his partner Charlie Nash filled in with his own take on sonic booms and flash kicks. Nash is presumed dead in the Street Fighter 2 era, fueling Guile's need to bring M. Bison to justice. Nash's tragic story would serve as a major plot point in Street Fighter 5 as well. So we've seen some familiar faces and some previously referenced fighters, but what about all new characters? Fortune Teller Rose puts her soul power up against M. Bison's psycho power, paving the way for Street Fighter V's Manat to follow in her footsteps. Meanwhile, Akuma returned as a hidden character yet again, and Dan, everybody's favorite punching bag, debuted as a hidden character as well. They would both become regular cast members in the next game. From a casual perspective, Alpha maintained many of the core concepts from Street Fighter 2, which was a good way to bring existing players over to the Alpha series. If you could throw a fireball or pull off a flash kick from Street Fighter 2, you could still pull these off in Alpha. Even Super Combos returned, but now with three different levels of strength. Filling up one level enabled your Super Combo, but you could keep powering up to three levels for an even bigger attack. The Super Combo Gauge was also used to perform Alpha Counters, an all-new gameplay concept. As long as you had at least one level of the Super Gauge filled, you could deflect an incoming attack by blocking and then triggering your Alpha Counter. And speaking of blocking, you could finally block attacks while in the air. Also, characters could now recover from a knockdown by rolling forward. Many of these systems were added to aid newer players. The feature that perhaps stood out most was the chain combo. Today, players tend to associate the idea of chain combos with Guy or Ibuki, but in the original Street Fighter Alpha, this was a system-wide feature. Instead of needing to learn special move cancels, which could be complex for beginning players, you could just tap buttons in a specific sequence and they would chain together as one combo. 
So Ken, for example, could chain a crouching light kick into a crouching medium kick into a standing heavy kick for one of the most commonly used and seen chain combos. Another unique feature was a hidden two-player co-op mode, which was yet another reference back to the 1994 anime movie, The Dramatic Battle, which allowed two players to control Ryu and Ken to team up in a cooperative battle versus a computer-controlled M. Bison. This fateful showdown is an in-game tip of the hat to the film's closing battle between these three iconic characters. Released just a year after Alpha 1 in 1996, Alpha 2 essentially overwrote the events of the first Street Fighter Alpha and also moved them forward. So in a strange way, it was both a remake and a sequel that expanded on the story of Alpha 1. All of the Alpha characters returned, plus a whole new assortment of fighters. Gen represented Street Fighter 1. Zangief and Dalsum returned from Street Fighter 2. Rolento further filled out the final fight crossover. Akuma, Dan, and Bison all became selectable from the start without needing a secret code. This would be the first time Akuma was playable in an arcade without an elaborate procedure to unlock him. But as Akuma stepped in to become a regular character, Evil Ryu debuted as a secret member of the roster. This alternative version of Ryu one that suggests what would happen if Ryu were to succumb to the same evil forces that power Akuma would appear in many subsequent Street Fighter titles. But making her grand debut is Sakura, an energetic schoolgirl who idolizes Ryu and mimics his signature moves, though with her own spin on them, of course. Her exuberant animations and personality brought a bit of levity to an otherwise serious plot about revenge, power, and worthiness. Alpha 2 expanded on the Alpha Counter system, giving every character two Alpha Counters. Rolling was also expanded as players were now allowed to roll three different distances. The chain combo system, however, was removed and replaced with custom combos. If your super gauge had at least one meter charge, you could trigger a custom combo that let you string together normal and special moves as the meter depleted. These moves could be woven together in ways that weren't possible in regular combat, making custom combos a very free-form type of fighting. In many ways, Alpha 1 was designed to help the beginner. Alpha 2, however, catered more towards experienced players. Not only did it solidify the series in many aesthetic ways, but the gameplay was tighter and it brought back many hardcore players from the past. As the game progressed, it really became apparent that custom combos were a powerful tool. Coined the Valle CC, Alex Valle created a custom combo technique that enabled the player to attack before the opponent was able to block. Vi's application of the custom combo led to his eventual tournament win at Battle by the Bay and cemented himself as the best in the nation. A full-on sequel bursting with new characters and concepts, Street Fighter Alpha 3 had something for everyone. Casual fans could now choose among 28 playable characters, including Street Fighter 2 favorites E Honda, Kami, Blanca, and Vega, as well as Final Fight anti-hero Cody. All new fighters included Rainbow Mika, a colorful pro wrestler, and Karen, the wealthy upper-class counterpart to Sakura. Also, Street Fighter II veteran Balrog, as well as two new characters, Julie and Juni, two of M. Bison's fearsome super soldiers known as Dolls, could be played via secret codes. Alpha 3 also improved the series' in-game storytelling. Every character had specialized intros, secret mid-boss fights that could be triggered by completing certain criteria, and unique interactions with M. Bison at the end of the game. One small but beloved addition was an exuberant announcer that, even to this day, is one of the most nostalgic aspects of the game. It all depends on your skill. Go for broke. 
To some players, Alpha 3 was praised as Capcom's most experimental game in the entire Street Fighter history. Alpha 3 attempted to really shake things up from what everyone expected. There were many new subtle systems added, such as new counter hit mechanics, throws performed by pressing two punches, and a guard gauge that punished players for blocking too much. If you block too much, you could be guard crushed and momentarily vulnerable to any attack. The game also saw the return of a system from the Street Fighter 2 series, the close-up attacks. However, there were two system mechanics that really made Alpha 3 stand out. One was the introduction of a much more robust juggle and aerial recovery system. For the first time, the ability to combo your opponents freely out of the air was allowed. But at the same time, characters were also given the ability to recover in the air and continue fighting from there. Also, every character was given access to air throws, which used to be only available to certain characters. All these changes added an entire new layer to the game. Then there were the isms. Before a match, you could choose one of three isms that would give your fighter significantly different powers and abilities. Aism functioned like past alpha games, giving players access to a three-tiered super combo gauge. Air blocking, alpha counters, and rolling. Your attack, defense, and speed were all balanced to a mid-level range, making this the standard-ism of the three. X-ism gave players one devastating super combo gauge with increased attack power across the board, meant to mimic the style of play from Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Thusly, you didn't have access to abilities that weren't in Super Turbo as well, such as air blocking and alpha counters. You were definitely more powerful, but you sacrificed many defensive options. Finally, Vism brought the custom combo back from Alpha 2, albeit in a very modified form. You have much more mobility in this version, but the rules were more restrictive, and now custom combos included a shadow that repeated your attacks that could also strike the opponent and aided in combos as well as lockdown sequences. You also had manual control over when you performed ranged or close-up attacks. Thus, Vism was the most complex mode with the most options, but at the expense of lowered attack power. In the end, Vism turned out to be the most potent at highest levels of play. But with three wildly different options at players' disposals, the possibilities were immense, and the variety was something the genre had never seen. There were even a few hidden isms that were there for fun, such as one that made you extremely powerful, but the opponent only needed to win one round to win the entire match while you still had to win two. What could have been a quick sidestep in Street Fighter lore became an entire sub-franchise within the series. The sights and sounds of the Alpha series make them stand apart from all other Street Fighter titles. And even though they're all related, each game feels distinct from each other too. Each has gameplay ideas that are either refined or absent in the other games, and each has its own intro and outro theming that gives it a unique feeling. Even today, the Alpha series is viewed in high regard. In fact, amongst veteran players, there is also an ongoing debate on whether Alpha 2 or Alpha 3 is the superior game of the series. This debate will probably never be resolved, but it speaks to how much people enjoyed the series. All three Alpha games are part of the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection, which also includes nine other games from the series, from the 1987 original all the way to Street Fighter 3 Third Strike.